Guys, today's the day. Today's the day that we're going to try out the new Nutramil Artiste mixer. Well, new to me anyway. Um, I have been told that this is not necessarily a new mixer out on the market, but that it is a mixer that was on the market in the past and has been discontinued and reconfigured into this new mixer. So, in a sense, it's brand new on the market. In a sense, it's a redesign of something older. But since they pulled the Bosch Compact Mixer, which is what I have been using, I haven't wanted to upgrade to one of the giant mixers because I'm in a small space. So I thought this would be the perfect mixer to try out for the first time. So today, I'm going to try making my honey oat bread recipe. I'll put a link in the description box below. I chose a bread recipe that I make all the time so I can be very familiar with how my bread is looking, how the dough textures and moisture levels and the kneading process and all of that goes. So I wanted to choose something that I make pretty much every week or every other week. That way I know for sure that I have a good representation on how this new mixer is kneading for me. So I'm gonna bring you along with me the very first time I use this. I've not used this for anything yet other than unboxing it, which I have a video of my unboxing I can link below also and just like looking around with it, but I haven't made anything, I haven't kneaded with it, I haven't, haven't done any recipes or anything in that yet. So we're doing that together for the first time. So let's get started milling the grain. Okay, so in my recipe that I call for half hard white and half hard red for the honey oat wheat bread. So I'm going to use that amount, but I'm also gonna throw in just a little bit of kamut just because I like the flavor and what it does to the dough, but I'm not going to do a ton of it. So I'm gonna do my 480 grams and I like to measure my wheat berries. That way when I mill the wheat, I get the flour and I know exactly how much weight flour I'm going to get. So we're gonna do 480 grams and that'll give me 480 grams of flour and then we'll take it over to the mixer. Okay, so you can see the splash of Kamut in there just a little bit. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and mill this. Okay, so here's our fresh milled flour. And while this was milling, I went ahead and weighed out my water. So I'm gonna do 375 grams of water and I'm gonna put this in the microwave and just warm it up a bit and take this over to the mixer. So let's go on over there together. Okay, so we are using our new Nutramil Artiste. The plug here, oh, it has a nice stick to here, but it goes, feeds into the bottom of this. So I've already got that plugged in. And then we're using the regular bowl. This is the bowl that comes with the mixer. I know if you saw my unboxing, I bought a special bowl and I will show you that probably in a later video, but this is, I'm just using the what comes standard with the normal mixer. And I'm noticing that we have a much better view in here um, than we did with my other mixer on camera. So that's a good thing. <laughs> I've got the water heated up and I went ahead and put our butter in there to start melting. So I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and this, lid is one thing I do love so it opens and closes so you can put stuff through here without having to take the lid off which isn't difficult to do either but maybe this will help me be a little bit cleaner so I'm going to try and do this with the lid on if it gets annoying then I'll pull it off so we're going to go ahead and pour in our warm water with our melted butter we're going to do one and a half teaspoons of salt So you all know my little trick. I like to leave my mixing spoon out on the counter here. That way it reminds me that I have not put the yeast in because I like to let this sit. And I'm also seeing this may save me on some cellophane or plastic wrap because I think I'm gonna be able to just close this lid while my 
fresh milk flour is starting to absorb the liquid. So I might really like that feature that I'm just thinking about right now. So then I'm going to put a quarter cup of honey. Okay, so our quarter cup of honey. And then we're gonna go with one cup of rolled oats right into there. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and put in the fresh milled flour. So at this point, I've put everything in except for the yeast. I'm going to close the lid and we are going to start mixing. So this one seems to be a little bit quieter also, so I'm kind of liking that. This is at level two speed. And wow, everything seemed to come together really quickly. So I'm just gonna pulse this, because it has a little pulsing feature. Just to look, I don't even need to scrape my sides, I don't think. So I'm gonna go ahead and close this lid. I'm gonna let this sit for my 15 minutes like I normally do with my other mixer, and come back and we'll put the yeast in and we'll start the kneading process. So I will bring you back after we let that all sit and let the flour start absorbing the liquid. Alexa, set a timer for 15 minutes. Okay, it's been 15 minutes, so let's, I'm gonna take this off so you can see it better because we've got condensation on here. So here this is, I'm gonna give it a little pulse so you can see that. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put my lid back on. And this is reminding me that I need to still put my yeast in two teaspoons of yeast and I'm going to pulse that in kind of fun to watch okay so now I'm going to go ahead and start the kneading process I'm going to put this on level two but this came with this little quick guide that says use for kneading three to four speed. So I'm gonna put it on level two because that's what I used to need my other one on and see the difference between two, three, and four because I don't wanna overdo it, but if I can need this on level three to four, it even says heavy dough three to four or large batches, then we'll probably go ahead and do that. All right, so level two. Level three. Okay, so in watching this, I think I'm going to be needing this particular dough somewhere between level two and three. I kind of like the speed that three had, and I'm going to go ahead and see how long it takes for us to get this kneaded completely. If you, oh, just getting the rest of that off. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut the lid, start kneading at three, and I'm going to start my timer. Alexa, set a timer for five minutes. I'm gonna let you have a sneak peek. Probably shouldn't do this while this is mixing, but I wanna give you a sneak peek of what it looks like because I know it's hard to see through this because of the warm. But that's doing a really nice job. Obviously, I don't want to put my hands down in there because it's a pretty strong motor, it sounds like, so I don't want to break any fingers. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back on. And let that continue. Okay, it has been kneading for five minutes. Okay, so let's get the lid off here. I'm going to get my hands a little bit wet and see what we have here. So I'm seeing already that this is wanting to stretch. Oh my, wow. Okay, so I am just about getting the window pane after five minutes of kneading. 
I'm kind of in shock. Okay, I'm going to let this go because it's still breaking a little bit. I don't want to over knead it, which has never been something that I really, maybe one, one or two times I've ever been able to achieve, but you can see how stretchy this is already becoming. I'm kind of in shock, guys. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put this back on and I'm gonna let it go for like maybe two more minutes and then check it again. Okay, so we're looking at seven minutes of kneading now. I'll just let you see what it looks like here. Look how stretchy this is becoming. Now this is not super smooth yet, which is what I'm looking for when I get my window pane. My dough is very smooth, but I am seeing this be super stretchy. Like you can see how stretchy this is. It could be a mistake, but I think I'm gonna let this go for 10 minutes. I don't want to over knead it, but this is also new to me, so I want to make sure that I'm getting the best results that I can get. Now remember, I do have whole ro rolled oats in here, so that also does have to do a little bit with the smoothness of the dough. So, wow. Look at that stretch. That's like, reminds me of taffy. <laughs> if you've ever seen saltwater taffy be made. Okay, let me get my hands wet again, or my fingertips. Let's see what we got here. So I'm definitely getting window pane, but window pane that still wants to break. But look, like, I don't, this is a lot of gluten development. So I don't want to over knead this, but I've never used this before. Okay, I might ruin my bread by over kneading, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and put this in for like a couple more minutes and check on it again. Just if I'm going by texture and consistency from what I normally get from my other breads, doughs in the past. So let's just, let's just go for it. Two more minutes. Okay, so we are at 12 minutes now, and now I'm seeing a smooth dough. It, I don't know if you could tell the texture before, but the dough here is smooth rather than jaggedy looking. So, let's see what we got. Okay, I'm getting a nice window pane with like a relaxed dough. Did you guys see that? Did you see how fast that mixer kneaded the dough? It's harder to get my hand in here because of uh, all of these, obviously, so to show you, but I'm getting a relaxed window pane. You can see there, it's not really wanting to break. Obviously, I can break it. I am happy with that, and I cannot believe that now, 12 minutes, I'm where I need to be. That is literally half the time it normally takes. So I'm gonna pull this out so that we can let the dough rise. Look at all the gluten strands here and how much that has developed. That is amazing. That is going to make for a lovely, stretchy, beautiful dough. Now I can't decide if I should let this rise in the same bowl like I normally would with my other bread. I think I'm going to because that is easier for me. So I'm going to try to do this. I know with the center drive here. Let me know in the comments what you guys do. You, you with the 
Mixers with the center drive, do you normally let your dough rise in the same bowl or do you move it to another bowl for the rising? So I'm gonna go ahead and clean this part off. That way I can put it back into storage and then we'll come back to the dough here and cover that. Okay, now that I have that cleaned up, I'm going to consolidate this maybe into one dough ball. Now remember, I do like to work with a wet dough. So I just want to note that most of my recipes will call for a wet dough because I find that gives me the nice squishy bread that we're looking for. So I'm just trying to get this out of here. Again, this is the first time I've ever used this mixer. <laughs> So here is my lovely bread dough and I think I'm going to try letting it rise in here. I'm not sure how that's going to affect all of this if I'm going to have an issue with that. If it's going to make a big mess or whatever but we're going to try that. If I find it doesn't work then I will next time transfer it into a different bowl. So I'm just going to give this a little spray here which I'm almost out of. There we go. So it hopefully doesn't stick too bad. And I am going to try letting this rise with this lid that it came with and see how that goes. Because I kind of, this is kind of a game changer for me. I'm kind of loving that lid. So I'm gonna set this to the side we're gonna let this rise for about an hour and then I will bring you on back. I'm so excited, I can't wait. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this bulb that has the bottom drive. I gotta see the difference. So I'm gonna make the exact same recipe. Yes, I'm gonna have a lot of the same dough. Now this, I uh, just had to look it up actually because the bottom of this bulb does not lock into place and I thought maybe it was not compatible with this mixer or that I bought the wrong one, I don't know. But when I looked it up, it said it does not seat in there. It just kind of sits on here, like this. I mean, it does seat on there, but it doesn't lock into place. So, again, first time I'm using this mixer. And this one does come with its own lid. So, as you can see, this is the dough we just made earlier. It's still rising, it has its own lid. I'm still leaving that on there. I'm just gonna make the exact same recipe, that way it's a more fair comparison. So I'm gonna take our butter and, melted butter and water, and pour it into this mixer. And I'm gonna put the salt. I'm going to lay my teaspoon here so that I remember. Put my yeast in, and we're just going to do a quarter cup of honey. And yes, I just eyeballed that <laughs> because I put my quarter cup measuring cup in the sink. It's dirty from when I made the first batch because I wasn't expecting to do the second batch. Okay, salt, honey, butter. I'm gonna do the one cup of oats. I'm gonna just give it a little pulse. Oh, that's bad. Don't give it a pulse with the lid up. Oh no, why would you do that? <laughs> uh, how much do you think went out? Oh, a lot. It's everywhere. Okay, so don't turn this on or pulse it without the lid. I'm going to add just a little more water because we definitely lost some. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to go <laughs> put the flour in. And we're putting the lid on, which is a pretty important step for this bottom drive mixer. Okay, so, <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and now I'm gonna give that a pulse. So you can see it's pretty strong, all right.
Okay. So I can see we've got some dry flour here. So I'm not sure if that has to do with the lost a little of my flour or what, but we're just going to do this. And then mix it one more time. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and cover this for 15 minutes, just like we did the last dough, just like we do our normal dough. And then when we come back, we will put our yeast in. And I'll let you see what it looks like for the kneading. Okay, now it's been 15 minutes. This is my reminder. I'm gonna do two teaspoons of yeast. I use the instant yeast. If you are using active dry yeast here, what you wanna do is take some of the liquid from the recipe from before, and right before that 15 minute wait period, put the liquid, a little bit of the honey, and your yeast in there to let it bloom during that 15 minutes, and then now is when you would pour that in, and then you can start the next process. I'm going to go ahead and put the lid on. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and let this knead. I'm going to start out with just about five minutes and we'll come back and take a look at it. Okay. Five minutes. I can see the dough is still shaggy, but watching this mix is kind of crazy. This has a powerful motor. So I can tell already that, I mean, it's stretchy, wow. I'm not, no, not getting a window pane, of course. This has only been five minutes. I'm gonna go ahead, I just like to check on it through the stages to get an idea of what I'm looking at. So that's five minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and let it go for another few minutes and then I'll come back to it and let you take a look at it. Okay, we are at that 12 to minutes, 12 to 13 minutes from the other one. Okay. Definitely got stretch, but I really think it probably needs to go just a little bit longer. I'm gonna let this go a few more minutes and keep my eye on it. So we're at our 15 minutes and I can see there's a lot of dough up on the sides of the bowl here. Okay, so I have decided to scrape down the sides of this because I'm not quite sure what's going on here if I done if I did user error if this is supposed to be how it is I don't know that it is supposed to be all stuck to the side of the bowl here so once I get this all incorporated again I'm going to assess the dough here so I mean it's very stretchy and I did walk away for a minute, so I'm not sure if I missed my window of when I should have pulled this, because it, it wasn't all stuck to the side at the very beginning, just that's what I'm dealing with right now. But it's very stretchy, so I think I'm gonna go ahead and I can do my window pane. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull this off and let this rise rather than keep mixing it because I'm actually feeling this pretty happy with the texture. So let me see if I can get this out of here. Okay. So this went for about the 15 minutes and I have a feeling I probably should have stopped this at like 13 minutes. 
So I may have slightly over kneaded this, but I think we caught it in time. I really think that this would be an amazing attachment. Right now I'm only making one batch of dough, which essentially does two loaves of dough or two pounds, two small one pound loaves. So if I wanted to double this and the, the manufacturer says I can triple that. So we can do six loaves of bread in here. Okay, so I made myself a mess. I'm just trying to incorporate this all together. Again, first time using this, I will play around with it more to find out how I feel about this attachment because I was super excited about this attachment and I really, really, really wanted this to work for me. And I think it will, especially if I'm wanting to double or triple my batches. But as of now, the other batch of dough that went for 12 minutes, I'm really happy with. The only thing about the other one is it's hard for me to get my hands in there. And this is all completely open. So what I'm going to do is spray this with some oil, get my hands cleaned up here, spray this with some oil, put the lid on, and then we'll let this rise for about an hour. And then we'll see the texture of the dough. And meanwhile, my other dough is done rising. So we'll take a look at that too. All right. So we're just going to spray this. Put the cover on to let that rise. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and shape this. This is our dough, it's being it's done rising, and we're going to go ahead and bake it off and take a look. Okay, these are just about ready to go into the oven from the first batch. So this is the second batch that we did with our bottom drive kneading paddle. I'm going to make cinnamon rolls out of this because I want to try something a little bit different. So I'm going to go ahead and turn these into some cinnamon rolls. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and show you the slicer attachment that came with the deluxe bundle because I'm going to slice up some of the frozen butter to make another batch of the rough puff pastry. Uh, for those turnovers because they were so delicious. We are going to make cherry turnovers today And I do have a recipe for the rough puff pastry posted on my blog and I will make sure to Have that posted down in the description box below We are getting ready to try out the beater paddles and the scraper for the first time on the newly updated Nutramil Artiste, so let's give it a try for our cream cheese buttercream Okay, it's not done yet, obviously, but I think I'm still going to have to do a little bit of scraping because you can see right here, it didn't mix in very well and over here, but the texture and consistency of the actual buttercream that it's creating looks divine. So I'm going to go ahead and scrape down the sides here and we're going to call this a win because these scrapers did help keep it from sticking to the sides of the bowl and sticking front to the center of the bowl. So I really like that. But this is only like a small half batch of buttercream. If I were to make a large batch of buttercream, it probably would even give me better results. So I'm pretty happy with this. I'm gonna scrape this down, continue, and then we'll have some nice, beautiful cream cheese buttercream. Okay, so to wrap this up, what are my thoughts on this mixer? Again, this is the first time that I've used it, so I'm sure there's a learning curve getting used to it uh, as opposed to my old mixer. Okay, so this mixer does have several pros to it. The first one being the built-in lid or the lid that comes with it. So I can use that instead of using cling film or a cover or whatever to let my dough rise. So I really love that. And the second thing about the lid is I'm able to open and close it while I'm in the middle of mixing or anything like that. So that part is amazing. Another pro for this mixer is 
the motor on it. I can tell that it is just a stronger mixer than my original Bosch Compact. So as far as strength goes, I think this one definitely is a winner for that. Another pro for this mixer is it needed my dough in half the amount of time as I normally do. So you know that I always am saying it can take 20 to 30 minutes to knead your dough to get the window pane. Um, so when I used my old, old mixer, which was my KitchenAid, the little mini artisan KitchenAid, that one took me at least 30 minutes almost every time to knead to get the window pane. Then I switched to the Bosch Compact Mixer and that did improve my knead times. So that took my kneading down to 20 to 25 minutes. Generally on average, it ended up being the 25 minutes kneading to get my nice stretchy window pane. And with this mixer, this time when I use it, it only took 12 minutes. Now, does that mean it'll take 12 minutes every single time I use it? No, every time I make bread, it's slightly different, but I can see that it definitely needs the dough much better. So as far as getting the window pane and the nice stretchy fluffy bread, definitely will be easier to do in this mixer. And the last major pro that I can think of for this mixer is the price point. So. If you want to get just the mixer and not all the accessories, the mixer I believe is just under $300 right now. Of course that price can change, but I feel like for another like $49 or something, you can get the Baker's Pack, the deluxe bundle. And right now they're running a sale until supplies run out. So I will put a link in the description box below for this mixer if you're interested in taking a look. It is a great price point in between the cheaper, less expensive mixers and the really expensive mixers. So as far as price goes, I think that's a win. So let's talk about some of the cons. The only major con that I'm noticing in this mixer for me, again, I've only used it this one time, <laughs> is I don't really love the center shaft. So it tends to get some of the dough stuck on it. Maybe that's user error, I'm not sure, but as of now, I will continue to try it out and see if that's something that keeps happening, but as of now, that's the only con that I can really think of. So all in all, this is a really great mixer, especially if you're looking for something in the middle range as far as price and size goes. And you can get several different attachments for this one, so all kinds of different things that you can make. As far as the stats go, this one is just about 10 pounds. That's without the bowl, so that's just the bottom base motor part. And the measurements are 11, about 11 inches wide. We measured 13 inches deep and about 13 inches tall, and that's with the bowl on. So let me see if I can. Okay, I'm not very tall, but you can see this is about the height of it. Okay, so I just got done mixing up. Um, you saw me use the whisks for the buttercream. And I just got done mixing up the cake batter here. I'm making the banana cake um, inspired by Sue Becker's uh, banana cake recipe in her home ground flour book. Which I can put a link below to that uh, recipe book. But I gotta say... For this mixer and it could be user error but if you can see here so the lid that comes with the mixer for the bread dough I was not able to get that lid on while I was using the mixer attachment which sits on the top so my honest opinion if you are going to be using this mixer to make bread and you're using fresh milk flour especially because it is harder to mix it's a denser dough it is just harder for our mixers to mix so if you are going to be making mostly bread this mixer is amazing but i'm finding that i'm struggling a little bit with it when i'm making my cake doughs cookie batter and ready to bake the cake <laughs> it works it works wonderfully. I'm not saying that it doesn't work, but there's just a few quirks about it that it's going to take me getting some used to. So if I want to make cookies or cakes, I may end up using my other mixer for that or my KitchenAid mixer for that or anything like that. But if you, if I'm making bread, 
you can bet I'm going to get this mixer out because it needs in about half the time as my other mixer. So it really depends on what you're wanting to make mostly. It will do all of them and it will do all of them very well. I'm just accustomed to my open bowl without the center shaft. I'm showing you my dirty sink here. Oh, I'm sorry, but I was not able to get these mixers paddles out of here with my wrists. So they were kind of hard with the batter on there. So I'm not sure. <laughs> so my family blames me of being a weakling sometimes with my wrists and hands, but <laughs> that's beside the point. Anyway, so I found that I had to, to pull those out. I had to stick my hands in the batter to get them disconnected because they were connected in there so well. So I'm just not in love with the paddle portion where you make your cookies, your cakes. It worked great for the buttercream, so I guess I don't really have any complaints about that, other than I still did have to scrape the bottoms occasionally, which I think you have to do with pretty much every mixer, or at least every mixer that I've used. But for bread, amazing. And the last thing that I don't love when I'm making cakes especially is there is no kind of like pour spout around here. So when I'm trying to get my batter out of the bowl and into my pan, it's definitely a two to maybe even get a helper process if I have a lot of cake batter. So I guess make note that maybe we need a spout of some kind or whatever in the future model. <laughs> I don't know, but that's just something that I'm noticing. And if you're a super fan and you've been watching this whole video all the way through to the end, I'm going to let you know on a little secret. So there may be another video of me doing an unboxing of something else that's pretty amazing coming up. And I'm trying to figure out if I want to try to do that as a live video. So let me know in the comments below if you would like to see me unbox something live for the first time with you guys. And if so, let me know if there's a certain time of the day or a certain day of the week that works better for you. Obviously, I'm not going to be able to cater to everybody, but if I can get narrowed down with something that works for my schedule and something that works for the majority of your schedules, I'd love to do that with you guys. That way you can ask me questions and we can kind of chat in the chat box. I thought it might be kind of fun. It will be my first live, so I might be a little bit nervous, <laughs> but I know you guys got my back. So thank you for that. So thank you for stopping by Grains and Small Places. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.